The PECO system starts at Basket Maker 3, Pueblo 1, of which this is a high point out here in the Ridges Basin. Pueblo 2 is Chaco Canyon. Pueblo 3 is Aztec ruins in Mesa Verde during that time period. And at 1300, by 1300, everybody's gone. And maybe I'll have time to talk about, they don't just all leave at once, they, they start leaving earlier. Pueblo 4 are the kind of pueblos that you see down in the Rio Grande and Hopi and Zuni. And when there were people there uh, at those places during this whole sequence, but when the tens of thousands of people leave here, that, they, they settled at, at Hopi and Zuni and Acoma and the Rio Grande pueblos. Um, and then comes the, you know, the Europeans. Some of the most important sites, archeological sites, uh, in the northern southwest lined up more south of each other. And meridian is the term for a line that goes from the North Pole straight to the South Pole. They're not all exactly on a north-south line, but they're within a, a kilometer or two um, of being on a meridian. Uh, that's been called the Chaco Meridian because it was the original argument was developed around Chaco Canyon, which is maybe 850 to 1150, something like that. But before that and after that, and each of the major time periods in the Southwest that the archaeologists have defined, in each of those time periods, the biggest, strangest, most interesting sites are all pretty much on that on that meridian. What it meant to them, I don't know, uh, but it, it was clearly a direction that everyone would know, and it could be, from my interpretation, sort of co-opted for political uses, which I think is part of what, at least part of what's going on, is a, a political system based around moving capitals um, that happens in other parts of the world. People are almost certainly drawn to Chaco in the first place for religious reasons. You have the towering heights of Fajada Butte, you have the canyon with a southeast-northwest alignment that's very naturally relating to different astronomical cycles. Solstices and lunar standstills, they're embodied in the land itself. So this was almost certainly a holy place, a place of great religious significance. Um, whether it was there because of that landscape or whether that sets the whole thing in motion, then they move north south along that, finding interesting landscape features you know, you know, on or near the meridian is a good you know, chicken and egg question. Is, uh, is the landscape determining where that meridian is or is the meridian sort of defining a landscape through time? You stand on a high point in Chaco and you look in all directions and the rain's surrounding you, mountains are surrounding you. You really do have the sense that you're in the center of it all. And that's where the capital develops. Those large basket maker villages are an earlier manifestation of this intense hierarchy and ritualism and political integration we see later in the Bonito era. I think the meridian defines a landscape, whether it's, if, if it's initiated about 500 AD down in Chaco, um, you know, it may have been some feature at Chaco that, that made that place important and they moved north south from that place. It's quite possible that something very important happened at Chaco at 500 AD. There's no, I don't think there's much question about that, but that there's a, the time period, uh, what archaeologists call Basket Maker 3 is 500 to 700, something like that. The biggest by far Basket Maker site in the Southwest is actually right at Chaco Canyon. It is Chaco Canyon. The low, and this is 500 to 700. Shibikashi, they dug that in the 30s and it had 100 pit houses in a great kiva, which you don't see other places. Down at the lower end of the canyon, you got one that's just as big. It doesn't have a name, it's just got a number, 423. It's another, you know, 80, 80 pit, house, pit houses in a great kiva. They're seven miles more than seven miles apart. And the whole seven miles between them is a whole string of one or two, three, one or two, three, you know, on every knob, basket maker site. So the whole thing is a huge, you know, huge basket maker site that stretched east-west for, I think, about seven miles. The whole canyon was the site. And from one end to the other, it's about nine miles long of great big basket maker sites at either, I mean, huge basket maker sites at either end and just continuous basket maker in between them. So it isn't a spot that's moving, it's this sort of length that's moving, which corresponds fairly well to the length between one end of Bridges Basin and the great big P1 sites, the 700 to 900 sites down in Blue Mesa, which is on the Animus. But this whole valley here is almost like you move Chaco north, because um, it isn't like one place, it's this length. And it's interesting over time, as these things move up and down the meridian, that gets sharper and sharper and sharper. The sites get smaller and smaller and more focused. Basket maker trees at Chaco, P2, is also at Chaco. P3 is up north at Aztec. And where's P1? It's right there, all right? It's right there. Um, it's Ridges Basin and Blue Mesa, and 
and Sacred Ridge and all the incredible stuff that was built on top of Sacred Ridge, it's due north of Chaco. It starts in Chaco with the basket maker, which is truly remarkable. It moves north to Ridge's Basin. This ends badly, very badly. They move back and say, okay, that one didn't work. Went north, it cratered, back to Chaco, and it did just fine. Uh, then they went north again, big mistake, to Aztec, that craters, and then they, they go way far south. The volume of the architecture diminishes a bit, but you know, there's still a lot of architecture packed in smaller and smaller spaces. The next big one on the meridian is Pakime, way down in, in Chihuahua. It's very compact, but very dense and urban, and so it's like this whole thing. There is definitely a tendency through time for things to be less dispersed in these big sites and more and more concentrated.